What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you exactly what a proxy server is in case you have no idea what this thing does. So let's get into it. In the realm of internet technology, proxy servers, they play a vital role in enhancing security, improving performance, and maintaining privacy, whether for personal use, business applications, or large-scale organizational deployments. Understanding how proxy servers work and their benefits can help users and IT professionals make informed decisions. And in this video, we're going to talk about the concept of proxy servers, explaining what they are, how they function, their types, benefits, challenges, and future trends. All right, so exactly what is a proxy server? So a proxy server, this acts as an intermediary between the client, such as a computer or a mobile device, and a destination server, such as a website or some online service. And when a client makes a request to access a resource on the internet, the request is first sent to the proxy server. The proxy server then forwards the request to the destination server on behalf of the client, receives their response, and then relays it back to the client. And here are some of the key characteristics of proxy servers. So once again, they act as an intermediary. So proxy servers, they serve as a middleman between clients and destination servers, handling requests and response. There's anonymity and privacy. So by masking the client's IP address, proxy servers, they can enhance privacy and anonymity. And then there's content filtering and control. So proxy servers, they can filter and control the content that clients access, providing security and compliance benefits. All right, so let's talk about exactly how does a proxy server work. So the operation of a proxy server, this can be broken down into several steps. Step one is the client request. So when a client wants to access a resource on the internet, such as a web page, it sends a request to the proxy server instead of directly to the destination server. Then there's step two, which is the proxy server processing. So the proxy server receives the client's request and evaluates it based on configuration and policies. And this may involve checking access permissions, applying filters, filters or modifying the request. And then there's the forwarding request. So if the request is allowed, the proxy server forwards it to the destination server on behalf of the client using its own IP address instead of the client's IP address. Then after that, there is the receiving response. So the destination server processes the request and sends the response back to the proxy server. And then after that, the proxy server receives a response, processes it if necessary, and then sends it back to the client. And here's a quick example of the proxy server operation. So we got the client request. So where user wants to visit a website, the request is sent to the proxy server. After that, the proxy server checks if access to that website is allowed. And if it's permitted, it forwards a request to the destination server. Then as it's doing, that the proxy server uses its own IP address to send a request to that website. And then after that, the destination server processes a request and sends the web page content back to the proxy server. And then finally, the proxy server receives the web page content, checks it for any restricted content, and then forwards it to the user. All right, so let's talk about some various types of proxy servers. So proxy servers, they come in various types, each serving different purposes and offering unique features. And here are some of the common types that are out there. So you have what is called a forward proxy. And this is also known as just simply a proxy because it serves as an intermediary for clients seeking resources from other servers. And it is typically used for filtering content, caching, and providing anonymity. Then you have what is called a reverse proxy. And this sits in front of one or more web servers and forwards client requests to those servers. It is used for load balancing, caching, and enhancing security by hiding the identity of the backend servers. Then you have what is called a transparent proxy, and this intercepts client requests without requiring any configuration on the client side. It is often used by ISPs and organizations to enforce content filtering and monitoring web traffic. Then you have what is called an anonymous proxy, and this hides the client's IP address from the destination server, providing a degree of anonymity. However, it may still identify itself as a proxy. Then you have what is called a high anonymity proxy or an elite proxy. So a high anonymity proxy not only hides the client's IP address, but also does not reveal itself as a proxy. It provides the highest level of anonymity. Then you have the SOX proxy, and this operates at the transport layer, and it can handle various types of traffic, including HTTP, FTP, and SMTP traffic. And it is often used for applications requiring a high degree of flexibility. And then you have what is called a web proxy. 
privacy. And this allows users to access websites through a web-based interface. Users, they enter the URL of the website that they want to visit, and the web proxy fetches the content and displays it in the user's browser. All right, so let's move on and talk about the benefits of a proxy server. So proxy servers, they offer numerous advantages that make them valuable tools for both individuals and organizations. And the first benefit is enhanced security. So proxy servers, they can protect clients from malicious websites. They can block harmful content and they can hide the IP addresses of clients, which reduces the risk of cyber attacks. Then there's improved privacy. So by masking the client's IP address, proxy servers, they provide a layer of anonymity making it harder for websites and online services to track user activities. There's content control and filtering. So organizations, they can use proxy servers to enhance content policies, block access to inappropriate or harmful websites, and monitor internet usage. There's load balancing. So reverse proxies, they can distribute incoming traffic across multiple servers, optimizing resource utilization, and ensuring high availability and reliability. Another benefit is caching. So proxy servers, they can cache frequently access content, reducing latency and improving load time for users. And this also reduces bandwidth usage and server load. There's access to geo-restricted content. So users, they can access content that is restricted based on geographic location by routing their requests through proxy servers that are located in different regions. And then there's bandwidth management. So proxy servers, they can help manage and optimize bandwidth usage by compressing data Data, blocking unwanted content and prioritizing essential traffic. Now, despite their benefits, proxy servers also present certain challenges and limitations. And the first challenge is performance overhead. So the additional processing and routing a request to a proxy server, this can introduce latency and slow down internet access, particularly if the proxy server is heavily loaded. There's complex configuration. So setting up and managing proxy servers, especially in large and complex networks, this can be challenging and requires specialized knowledge. There's the aspect of being a single point of failure. So if a proxy server fails, it can disrupt access to internet resources for all clients relying on that server. So implementing redundancy and failover mechanisms, this is essential. Another challenge is privacy concerns. So while proxy servers can enhance privacy, they can also be used to monitor and log user activities. So trust in proxy service providers is crucial for ensuring data and privacy. There's compatibility issues. So some websites and online services, they may block or limit access from known proxy servers, which can affect the user experience. In certain applications, they may also be incompatible with specific types of proxies. And then there's security risks. So misconfigured or compromised compromised proxy servers, they can introduce security vulnerabilities, potentially exposing users to cyber threats. So regular security audits and updates are necessary to mitigate these risks. All right, so let's move on and talk about some future trends in proxy servers. So the field of proxy servers continues to evolve, driven by advancements in technology and changing user needs. And here are some trends that are shaping the future of proxy servers. The first is the integration with VPNs. So the combination of proxy servers and VPNs, this offers enhanced security and privacy. And users, they can benefit from the features of both technologies, such as encrypted traffic and IP masking. Then there's artificial intelligence and machine learning. So AI and machine learning, this will play a role in improving proxy server functionality. And these technologies can enhance content filtering, detect and mitigate threats and optimize performance. Then there's cloud-based proxies. So cloud-based proxy services are becoming more popular, offering scalability, flexibility, and ease of management. And these services can provide robust security features and global reach. You have enhanced privacy features. So with growing concerns about online privacy, proxy servers will continue to develop features that enhance user anonymity and protect against tracking and surveillance. Another trend is IoT and edge computing. So as the Internet of Things expands, proxy servers will be used to secure and manage traffic from IoT devices. And edge computing will benefit from proxy servers to process data closer to the source. There's the zero trust architecture. So proxy servers will play a crucial role in zero trust security architectures, which requires continuous verification of users and devices. And proxies, they can enforce security policies and provide secure access to resources. And then there's the increased focus on performance. So future proxy servers will focus on minimizing latency and optimizing performance, leveraging technologies such as caching, load balancing, and advanced routing algorithms. 
So to successfully implement proxy servers, organizations should follow these best practices. First thing you need to do is define clear objectives. So you want to establish clear goals for using proxy servers, such as enhancing security, improving performance, or enforcing content policies, and understanding the purpose will guide the implementation process. You want to choose the right type of proxy. So you want to select the appropriate type of proxy server based on your needs. You want to consider factors such as security requirements, performance performance expectations, and these specific use cases you intend to address, such as content filtering, load balancing, or anonymity. Then you want to implement redundancy and failover. So to avoid single points of failover, you want to set up redundant proxy servers and configure failover mechanisms because this ensures continuous availability and minimizes disruptions in case one proxy server goes offline. Also, you want to do some regular updates and patches. So keep the proxy server software and hardware up to date with the latest patches and security updates because this helps protect against vulnerabilities and cyber threats. You also want to do some monitoring and logging of activities. So you want to implement monitoring and logging to track proxy server performance and user activities because this aids in detecting issues, ensuring compliance, and improving security. Another best practice is you want to optimize configuration. So you want to configure proxy servers for optimal performance by adjusting settings such as caching, compression, and load balancing. And you want to fine tune these parameters because they can enhance user experience and reduce latency. Next, you want to ensure compliance with policies. So you want to ensure that the use of proxy servers complies with organizational policies, industry standards, and legal requirements because this includes respecting user privacy and adhering to data protection regulations. Regulations. You also want to educate the users. So educating users about the benefits and proper use of proxy servers is paramount. So provide training on how to configure their devices to use the proxy and understand the security and privacy implications. After that, you want to implement some access controls. So use access controls to restrict who can use the proxy server and what resources they can use. This helps in preventing unauthorized use and ensures that only approved traffic is routed through the proxy. And then you want to conduct some regular audits. So you want to perform regular security audits and assessments to identify and address potential vulnerabilities because continuous auditing, this helps maintain the security and integrity of the proxy servers. All right, so let's quickly talk about some case studies of proxy server implementations. So examining successful implementations of proxy servers, they can provide valuable insights and inspiration. So here are some notable cases. So when it comes to educational institutions, many educational institutions, they use proxy servers to control internet access and enforce content filtering policies. So for example, a university, they might implement a forward proxy to block access to inappropriate websites and monitor internet usage, which ensures a safe online environment for students. Next, we have corporate networks. So a large corporation, they may deploy reverse proxies to enhance the security and performance of its web applications. And by distributing incoming traffic across multiple backend servers, the reverse proxies, they can improve load balancing and protect the internal network from external threats. And we have the retail industry. So a retail chain, they can use what is called a transparent proxy to optimize bandwidth usage and improve the loading times of frequently accessed websites. And basically the proxy servers they will cache static content which reduces the need to fetch data from external servers repeatedly and then we have the healthcare sector so a healthcare provider they may implement a high anonymity proxy to protect patient data during online consultations and telemedicine services and the proxies they will ensure that the sensitive information remains confidential and secured from potential eavesdropping all right, so in conclusion, proxy servers, they are versatile tools that provide a range of benefits from enhancing security and privacy to improving performance and managing content. And by understanding the different types of proxy servers and their use cases, organizations and individuals can leverage this technology to meet their specific needs. And implementing proxy servers effectively, this requires careful planning, ongoing maintenance, and adherence to best practices. And as technology continues to evolve, proxy servers will play an increasingly important role in securing and optimizing internet traffic. So whether you are an IT professional looking to enhance your organization's network security, a business aiming to improve website performance, or an individual seeking to protect your online privacy, proxy servers offer valuable solutions. So by staying informed about the latest trends and advancements in proxy technology, you can ensure that your proxy server implementation remains robust, secure, and efficient.